When it comes to hosting your WordPress website, or really any website for that matter, you have about as many choices as you do colors that you could paint on your wall. Over the years, I've been trending closer and closer to managing my own servers, but I'm realistic. I don't wanna be a server admin, but I do want complete control over my data. I want to have a solution that's affordable, but also extremely performant. And I finally landed on something that I absolutely love and can't wait to show you. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll show you how this works, what the idea is, what my experiences are after this first couple of months of me using it. And if you're interested, I have an offer for you as well. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend too long on this hero section because there's this little uh, ever, you know, color changing background situation here, but this product is called Cloud Panel. And it's essentially a control panel that sits on top of infrastructure that you rent. This is is not a revolutionary idea. In fact, there are tons of other providers out there like GridPane, xCloud, RunCloud. There's a million solutions like that. And I actually have been a GridPane customer for about two years now, but in my opinion, it's far too expensive for what I get. So I went looking for something like that, but that had all the features I would need to run just a standard small WordPress agency and some sites of my own. And I landed on Cloud Panel. It's the exact same idea, but if you noticed, it says free. Well, first of all, let me address some concerns as I've talked to other folks. How could this possibly be free? Well, Cloud Panel is owned by a company that provides high level Magento e-commerce solutions. And if you know Magento, it's super difficult and typically very expensive, but it's for massive e-commerce stores. So this company built this solution for themselves internally and it's free to just use on your own. There's of course a couple of catches with that that I've encountered that really haven't changed my perception of this and how much I'm loving it. So I'll get to those later. But again, this is just basically a server panel on top of your own rented infrastructure. So you can see, you can set this up on AWS, Google, Hetzner, Vulture, DigitalOcean, and I'll show you more about that here in just a moment. I'm not gonna go through this cause you can go take a look at that, but the product is called Cloud Panel. Now in terms of the server provider that I've come to use and really enjoy, it's Vulture. I used them in the past when I first signed up with cloud ways, and then also on grid pane, I set up some servers. And so that's what I'm using to host my cloud panel install. So we'll get to more about that in just a second, but here is the backend for Vulture and one of my servers. So I wanted to see how far could I push just a relatively basic server, two virtual CPUs, two gigs of RAM, and this is the uh, Vulture high frequency server. So I think it's got like a slightly faster CPU and the storage is 80 gigabytes of NVMe SSD, which is cool. If that's all jumble, jumble, don't worry. This is a relatively affordable server because by the end of the month, it's only gonna cost me about 22 to $24 a month for this server. And on it, I have 10 clients and three of my own websites. So you can see it's getting pretty decent traffic, 72 gigs of bandwidth across all those sites. And the performance is honestly incredible. I've never had a server that felt so fast and websites on it that feel so lightning quick, despite the fact that like we already saw, Cloud Panel is free, it's totally wild. Now to give you an idea of how you would set this up. So you can either just provision the raw server with Ubuntu and you can log in via SSH, or in the case of something like Vulture, you could go to deploy a new server, then from here, all we would need to do is switch this to shared CPU. We definitely don't need a dedicated CPU for what we're doing on WordPress. Like I said, I chose high frequency and then the Vulture two gigabyte. And you can see with the backups, it's gonna cost me $22 a month and it's covered up by my head. It says 2160 a month right here. Oh, and of course up here at the top, you wanna pick the location that's close enough to you. So we would go to configure at this point. And like I mentioned, you could either just fire this up with a straight you know, raw Ubuntu installation, or you can go with marketplace apps. And whenever this decides to load, then you can see there's cloud panel right there. So it can be a really straightforward installation. You don't have to do everything via command line if you don't want to. I did when I first set up my server just to test it out, but it works either way, either do the marketplace or do it manually. Now, what does it look like when you actually get it set up? Well, this is my cloud panel dashboard. So this is exactly what I said. I have the server in Atlanta, two CPU, two gigabytes of memory, and I'll show you some of the sites on it here in a second, but you can see like this CPU usage never gets anywhere above 50% and it's really, really fast. Memory usage, also pretty strong. It's kind of getting up there a little bit, but like I said, I have a, a good couple of sites on here in terms of clients and also my own, which is relatively high traffic. And you can see I'm nowhere near the hard disk usage, which is awesome. Now, when I switch over here to the sites tab, so this is all of the sites on this website. So of course mine is here, along with all these other clients, like I mentioned. 
So what does it look like when you add a site? Well, if you go to add site, then of course you can create a WordPress site. You can create a PHP site. So if you're gonna do something like Laravel or you want something like that, this can set all that up for you. Or if you want to create static HTML, that's something that I do need because I do have a couple of clients with super old sites that are just raw HTML. So I needed to make sure I have that capability. And then if you go to create a PHP site, there's tons of other applications in here. So if you do Drupal or Laravel, Magento, any of those other things, there's a bunch of other things in here, even WooCommerce and WordPress. So you can you know go either way in that. If we create a WordPress site, it's super fast and you can see it's just gonna ask you some standard pieces of information and you click on create and it's ready for you in all of about 15 seconds. It's super, super fast. No waiting like two or three minutes while a Cloudways or Gridpane server provisions. It's just so much faster. So let's go take a look at some of the controls for individual sites. We'll just go ahead and go into mine here. So in the main settings panel, you have of course your domain name, which you would have configured when you first installed it. Then we have some other options here for site users for things like SSHN. You have all your different PHP versions that you would need and a lot of the other just PHP settings, input times and um, file uploads and things like that. Super, super handy. All really good stuff that you would definitely need to mess with. But for the most part, I pretty much just set everything to PHP 8.3 and then just run with it. I tend to follow one PHP version behind just for compatibility sake. Then if we scroll down, there's some other page speed controls, which honestly I don't use. Maybe it would be really fast if I did enable this, but it's already really fast. Basically every site, even after I've built it with all the plugins and everything on it, they all score like 98 or even 100 on PageSpeed Insights with no extra caching and just basically running behind Cloudflare and installing perf matters. I don't use any caching, no varnish, nothing like that. Then of course you can delete the site. Some of the other controls here is we have the vhost configuration. I'm not gonna click on that because that's my Nginx config, but that is going to allow you to do some really deep server level stuff. We have the ability to log into our database, which is perfect. So you have the um, PHP My Admin screen. You just click on that little manage button and it's gonna take you right into your database. Varnish cache, like I said, I don't even turn it on. Maybe it would be really fast if I did. Then of course you have the ability to purge your caches if you have that on. Now in terms of SSL, what I've done here is I use a SSL certificate from Cloudflare. So there is the ability to use Let's Encrypt natively right here inside of Cloud Panel, or you can get one for free from Cloudflare as well. And that's something that I'm planning to cover in the future as well as more information on Cloudflare. We have a bunch of clouds going on here, Cloud Panel and Cloudflare. Then in the security tab, a couple of other really cool things here is that there's also this function that says allow traffic from Cloudflare only, which is perfect. So this is really gonna lock down your site, make it secure and super fast. And this is just something that I really love for the security, you know, kind of speed and performance side of things too. Then also you can turn on just a standard basic authentication. If you wanna make sure your website is behind a little, you know, authentication box and not indexed, you can do that. You have the ability to SSH and FTP in, although there is a straight file manager here, which is awesome. This is something that other hosts I've used in the relatively recent past have not had. So in cases where you don't wanna to have to FTP in, you can just use the file manager, which I love. You can also set up server related crons. So in this case, I'm just running a cron every, uh, like once a day to make sure everything you know hits. And server crons tend to be more reliable than relying on the WordPress cron itself. And then of course you have logs. So there's you know plenty of stuff here for you. So you can see this is a very feature rich solution. One thing you might've noticed is that there's not a direct clone feature. So that's a little bit annoying, but really it didn't change my workflow much because I already use staging sites. So all I need to do is just fire up a new site here and just, I'm gonna make this you know staging.myclient.com and that's gonna be good enough. So once I build the site, I'm just gonna use all in one migration and take that file and just run it over the top of the new WordPress installation. So really not a big deal. And for a lot of cases, I'm using block visibility and a URL parameter to proof things with the client. So I'm actually doing it on the live site. I don't have to worry about moving things back and forth from staging and live. Let's quickly take a look at the admin area here. You do have the ability to add users to your control panel, which is amazing. And so what you could do is give somebody access to just one install if you want, or they can be a site manager where they can access all the sites, or of course they can be a full-blown admin like yourself and do everything on the server. You also have the events tab over here and that's just going to give you various logs like you know who logged in at what time and that kind of thing. In the instance tab, you can come over here and see the individual services running on your server and if you need to restart any of them for whatever reason, you can go ahead and do that. 
The settings tab is just the time zone and the IP of the server. Then the backup solution here is uh, really flexible. So I already have this set up so it doesn't show me uh, what exactly is behind this screen here. But basically what I've done is configured it to go to my Google Drive. So it's gonna take a copy of the server and build a, um, a zip file of the, each of the databases and each of the files on those sites and drop them in individual folders for me in my Google Drive. It works with things like Backblaze, Dropbox, um, the Amazon storage solution, whatever that thing's called. And in my case, Google Drive is actually really difficult to set up, but something like Dropbox is actually really easy to do. So there is a backup solution built right into this, which is super awesome. The security tab is just some firewall rules that come in here. I haven't touched that, so I'm not gonna go through that. Here we have the settings panel where I can set a custom URL, which I've done on my site. This just requires a simple CNAME record, and then it just kind of takes it there for you automatically, which is great. And then if you want, you can add more than one database server as well, which is handy. Then because the server is running on Vulture, there's this Vulture tab right here. And if I drop my Vulture API key in, it will actually have the ability to make snapshots of this whole server instance. And that puts it in a separate area inside the Vulture dashboard. So you have this like extra layer of uh, kind of backups that you can restore from, and you can do it on a pretty fast frequency. So this would allow you to not just rely on the cloud panel backups, but you can also do the snapshots. You do pay a little bit extra. It's like, I think five cents it's, it's pretty affordable, but the snapshots uh, would give you the ability to restore to a point in time on the whole server if you had something disastrous or maybe something really mission critical. And lastly, there is the support tab, which is going to take you to the cloud panel support area. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. So there is no direct support with cloud panel. That's kind of the trade-off of this being free. So if you go to the support page, you can see it says, please join our Discord channel. You might be kind of thrown off by that, but the Discord has actually been extremely helpful. There's been quite a few questions I've asked and somebody from the community has helped me really quickly. And I've actually been blown away at how good the support is just from other community members. And it's actually better than the support that I've received in the last two web hosts that I've used combined. It's amazing. And with all of those factors in mind, I've been really loving Cloud Panel. This product is amazing. I can't believe it's free. It's super fast, I have total control, I'm saving money too, and I definitely am going to be continuing to migrate all my remaining clients off of those other servers onto a new Cloud Panel instance. And with that, I'm gonna be producing a little mini course on Cloud Panel. I'm so thrilled and so happy with it that I've decided to fire up a new course this summer, and it's going to be basically everything from initial setup to how to use it and some of the gotchas that you can experience along the way. But like I said, the main benefits here is that you take back control, you reduce cost, and I'm getting extremely fast performance. So if you're interested in learning more about this, the link to this is in the description below. Like I mentioned, I'm extremely thrilled with this solution. I'm super excited to share it with you. And so far, most of the people that I've talked to are not actually even familiar with this cloud panel system. It's really great and I can't wait to share more with you in the future. So be sure to check out that link in the description. As always, my name is Jonathan and I'll see you in a future video.